Welcome to another episode of the Ultimate Fantasy Locker Room. As always, I'm Rocky, and this is uh, Phil Anthony. Yeah, here. I didn't catch him by surprise this no, time. I'm but ready. So uh, this show, we're going to do a little bit different. We're learning every week as we um, get a little bit, uh, some traction in, in our uh, episodes. And so this week, we're going to kind of take a game by game. And this is going to be a combination chumps, champs, with some waivers and maybe some injury yeah, reports some injuries thrown in, in there. So, so I'm going to take the first game and uh, we're going to talk to the, uh, or talk about the Cleveland Browns versus Houston Texans, yeah. which um, <clears throat> I did rub the hat and it did provide a Cleveland victory. They are mm-hmm. six and three. However, I, I must have rubbed it in the wrong area or not hard enough because probably not hard they, enough. They didn't cover, yeah. but uh, anyways, let's talk about some players. Um, that were meaningful in this game. So it, we can't start without saying Nick Chubb. Um, absolute monster game. Yeah. 19 and, uh, for 126 yards, 6.6 yard average, and a, and a touchdown. And Hunt was right behind them. Same yeah. amount of carries. Yeah, right? 19 and 19, yeah. Which is perfect, right? That's what you want to see. Yeah, that's what you're looking for, yeah. yeah. You, you hope Hunt could get into the end zone, but, I mean, so, I'll take 19 for 104 every day. Well, and, and especially when you mix in that he had a few receptions there, too. Um, he had three receptions, 28 yards mm-hmm. on four targets. Yeah. So, uh, a- absolute terrible weather game. So, uh, I think Baker Mayfield was 12 out of 20, but he threw 14 of those attempts in the first half. Second half, they totally switched. Yeah. Uh, he only threw six more times. And really, the Browns are at their best with Chubb leading the charge yep. and Mayfield not making mistakes. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, Watson was okay. I mean, he 30 attempts. It was pretty surprising. Yeah, um, and, uh, you know, and, and again, it was terrible weather. So, it, you know, I kind of felt bad for him. Some of his attempts was clear they slipped or the receiver couldn't catch it. And Duke was a little bit of a dud, huh? <sighs> you know, I mean, 3.9-yard average, not terrible. 14, you know, carries for 54 yards, yeah. and then he had, um, but he had no receptions. I think that was the difference, you know. So. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Cooks a little last week, and uh, he's six for 30. Now, but, I mean, all these are kind of skewed because of the weather, but yeah, uh, he did uh, have the same amount of targets as Fuller, eight targets each. Right. Uh, he brought in six for 39, and Fuller brought in five for 38. So it kind of played out like we said in, uh, Fuller averaging a little bit more, so he evens them up basically on the yardage and with one less reception. I do think, though, that just going forward, um, both Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt are safe starts. Yeah, um, I think that they're going to be getting this split. They're made better by each other. Chubb actually ran out of bounds. I don't know if you saw it, but ultimate um, unselfish move. Mm-hmm. He they, The Browns were up 10-7. to 7 with 55 seconds left and he ran an end around uh, it would have been a 59 yard touchdown but he willingly stepped out of bounds at the two yard line oh, wow. so that they could run out the clock and they didn't try to score they just basically closed the game up so the game really should have been uh 17-7 and Chubb would have had two touchdowns or Kareem would have had a chance to run it in nice. normally so and no tight ends to speak of in this no game tight ends. No, so, yeah. so I would say that's probably it on that game, Phil. Yeah. Why don't you lead us into the next one? Oh, yeah, this is a game I uh, watched last night, the Baltimore-New England game. How about that? I, I mean, I, I, it was another terrible weather game for sure. Um, what what were your takeaways from, from that game? I mean, it's uh, Bill Belichick. It's kind of what I thought. They're just going to figure out a way to grind the game out. Um yeah, they're not flashy for sure. They held Jackson in check, but uh, he had a little bit of a bounce back this week, no? Uh, Lamar Jackson, yeah. yeah. Although he did throw a costly interception, and uh, I think he was wildly inaccurate from uh, twenty yards on. So, and if you look at how good they were last year, a lot of their greatness came with him throwing passes over twenty yards. It just seems like they're not in sync. Part of it's weather, but I think we've had enough of a season to see that he's just not hitting. 
Like he no, was. he's he doesn't look like he does last year. But I was just happy to see him put up uh, twenty plus points. Yeah, at least he got you that this week. And yeah, yeah, yeah a- absolutely. And if you look at, you know, again, you can always count on him for running. And that was another impressive, you know, fifty five yards on the ground. So you know, going forward, I don't like him as a quarterback. I don't know how good they are, but he's probably going to average twenty points every single game for you or more. Yeah, and I don't like any of these other guys in the backfield either. I mean. They're basically no. getting his three guys rotating, getting the same amount of carries. Yeah, and Ingram's back, which makes it even yeah. more muddy. Mm-hmm. A JK dropped a pass that he should have had. The game was over by that point, yeah. but and it was a terrible weather game. But uh, if I'm looking for running backs that look good, I'm going to mention Damian Harris again. Yeah, um, I don't understand them. Twenty-two carries. 121 yards, 5.5 yard average. Clearly, he's their lead back. Yep. Yet, anytime they're around the goal line, they go away from him and give it to Rex Burkhead. Uh, I just, I don't really understand it. Um, yeah. But for whatever reason, that's what they're doing. And Cam gets you uh, super modest passing yards here 13 for 17, 118 yards, but he gets you that touchdown yeah, in we- the air and gets you the touchdown on the goal line, too. Yeah, can we talk about his uh man, he's got to stop with this post game dressing. It's just it's ridiculous. I mean, honestly, it's embarrassing. I've been yeah, I've gotten over it. I mean, he was wearing a if you don't know, look up Fez hat. It just is a joke. Have you seen him with the scarf? I I've seen him with multiple <laughs> scarves. It's just, you know, and the thing is, ridiculous. I'm going to be honest with you. There's yeah. guys that make anything look good and girls yeah. that make anything look He's not one of them. Oh. He he looks he, uh, when he wears a scarf, he looks like my mom. He looks, yeah. Yeah, with it's a mustache. Ridiculous. Yeah, so, all right. Yeah, and then, uh, I mean, Jacoby Myers had a decent game. Yeah, well, and, and specifically because he threw a touchdown. Well, yeah, well, we're not going to count on that, but it was nice to see. But he gets you five receptions, 59 yards, seven targets. So, I mean, I like Bird, uh, but he didn't really do much. Um Mark Andrews had a decent game, you know, nine targets, seven receptions, 61 yards. For a tight end, you're really going to be pretty excited about that. Yeah, especially with, you know, usually you're looking at him, if he doesn't score a touchdown, he's probably going to let you down. But that was uh, pretty nice to see this year. Yeah, I think he was one of the highest, uh, as far as tight ends, he was number one for a point total this week. He was tied with 13 with Rob. Gronkowski and Hunter Henry, who I said was not a good player and who did well. And so. Burkhead caught two touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, he did. Okay. Burkhead's pretty uh I pretty just special. can't. It's I mean, it's just one of those guys I would probably never start unless they cleared the way. You know, you had the injuries and you just knew he was going to get the work. So I would start him if I was desperate and I'm looking for a bye week fill-in. So... All right, let's go on to the next game. I've got the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Bengals. Um, and uh, that is kind of a mixed bag. Pittsburgh led the entire game. There was never any any doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben Roethlisberger was injured, even with his two knee uh, injuries. He still threw for four touchdowns. Actually, this was yeah. his best game of the year, I believe. Yeah. Um, Phil, what else struck, struck you about that game? Well, I mean... It kind of went the way we thought it was going to go, uh, especially when we were talking about it last week. And Yeah, I think with our points, all of us took Pittsburgh even giving was it eight and a half, or eight nine. And a half yeah. points. Yeah. And I, I looked up at the leaderboard on Monday, and it was like, what is it, like 2015? You had yeah. Brady, uh, Big Ben, Lee, uh, Rogers leading the board. It was uh, pretty funny to see. But, I mean, I guess it's kind of with Joe Burrow, like we're saying, he struggled against Baltimore. Uh, and he struggled yesterday. He struggles against great defenses, I and think. He's a is, rookie, so yeah. I mean, his QBR was 45.4, 213 yards, one TD. Um, well, and what I like, though, is he's not throwing interceptions, even when he's struggling. He's yeah. not making mistakes that alter the game, you know, against them. And Mixon was a late scratch, right? <sighs> you know, and... Both Mixon and Chris Carson were surprise late starts. The intel going into Friday is that they would start. Neither mm-hmm. one did. So I'm starting to really wonder how severe their injuries are. Um, 
But yeah, and they they were led not by Gio, uh, Giovanni Bernard. He had one more touch. Yep. But um, Pirine or Pirine, S- I think Sama- Samaja, Samaja, yeah, Samaja, Samaja Pirine. Pirine, um actually led in rushing. And and conversely, on the other side, it was kind of a dud for James Conner and Benny Snell because yep. they just they were able to move the ball just by passing the ball all around the yard. Yeah. Yep. And then Higgins, you know. Boyd had one less reception than him, but you look at the yardage. Even uh, he had the basically that boom play get you a touchdown. Uh, nine targets. Boyd had eight, and and I think that's the telling uh, stat right there is that T Higgins is starting to lead in targets. So it's, and he lost the ball too, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Um, uh, and conversely, AJ Green five targets, no catches. So it proves that they're trying to force the ball into him because of his name. Mm-hmm. I, at this point, don't think AJ should be on anybody's rosters. Yeah, me neither. So, and then uh, Deontay, great yeah. game for Deontay. Eleven it, target. You know what's great? They threw the ball. They got eleven targets for Johnson. Uh, 13. Thirteen for Juju. Ten for Claypool. Yep. And they all kind of made do with it. They each got a touchdown. Claypool put, had two. Yeah. Uh, Claypool. You know he. Four catches, 56 yards. But you'll take the two touchdowns, and Juju's just – I mean, I think we're kind of starting to see what Juju's going to be Yeah. without Brown on the team. It's well, just, you know, he's uh, – I'm trying to think of a guy to compare him to, but just he, consistent. It's odd. You know? he, he's taking over that slot mm-hmm. role, I think, a lot more. Well, They're yeah. using Deontay. It's really odd. They're using Claypool and Juju as slots underneath. And then Deontay's kind of stretching the field. But um, all three were in the top 10 as far as points uh, this week. Mm-hmm. We had Claypool got 21, Juju got 22, and Deontay Johnson got 24. So, yeah. uh, you know. Well, you're not going to play the Bengals every week you, either. You're so. not. And you can't start all three of them every week. So yeah. it is going to be a boom or bust, I think, for you know going out the rest of the season. Unless you're playing the Bengals or the Browns or, you know. Yeah. Anybody yeah. else from that game? Oh, not really. I'm ready to talk about Philip Rivers over here, man. All right, talk about it. Let's go. You know, he didn't have a bad game, but considering the defense they were playing and uh, how many points they put up, I kind of expected a little bit more. I mean, going into that game, I just expected a little bit more. I, did, I didn't start him. I forgot, lost track, and left uh, Watson in, which didn't turn out too bad. But he only tossed one TD. Uh, QBR was 70, 75.8. Um, and uh, you got to look at Michael Pittman now. It's kind of the, I mean, throw Hines in there too, but as far as the wideouts, Michael Pittman, seven catches, 101 yards, eight targets. He out-targeted everybody else on the team. I mean, and you got a bunch of other guys that are just, I mean, I wouldn't start Hilton, Pascal, none of those guys. Even Burden, who I was uh, pretty high on a couple of weeks ago. It's kind of regressed a little bit. Um, what do you think about Hines? I think it's time to start taking him for real. He was the third highest uh, point total for running backs this week. Mm-hmm. Now, C- Cooks hasn't played yet. He'll play tonight. But um, even if he finishes fourth, it's pretty strong. He's the 14th rated running back right now, and he's consistent. Like, when I look at his point total game by game, he's – He's pretty consistently a start. Um, there are going to be games where he's going to have 20 points and games where he has five, but he's been a lot more consistent lately, and I think he's getting a lot of the um, receiving action. Well, yeah, and what's the I You know, I got to go back and look, but 12 carries. Yeah, yeah. For 70 yards, and uh, you get a touchdown in the air, touchdown on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and there's a guy that uh, drafted – Jonathan Taylor in my fantasy, uh, my <laughs> dynasty league this year. It's kind of, yeah, uh, s- screwing with me a little bit. But me too. I have him one of my leagues, and I would say, it, man, I've tried to trade him, and I just can't. Nobody wants him. There's no value in Jonathan Taylor, no, especially in a, a yearly. No. Yeah, and and the weird thing is, <clears throat> he he can catch. He's a bigger back. He's a faster back. Maybe. He figures it out going into his second year, mm-hmm. but it doesn't look promising right now. So and then Tannehill had another uh, disappointing game. Yeah, 
Now, I don't know if it's just, you know, the defenses he's got, you know, he's played two good defenses, so I'm hoping uh, that's what it is. But, yeah, I mean, uh, at this point, I, I think he's kind of a mad. You kind of seen that. I, I kind of thought this offense was going to be able to roll no matter who they were playing. But I guess it's a, a matchup base, so we'll see going forward. And then Derrick Henry, another uh, workman's day. I think carries 103 yards, no TDs. Um, but, you know, you're going to keep starting him. But uh, like you were saying about uh, Taylor, you might want to look at trying to trade Henry if you could. Yeah, he's he's hit a bit of a rough patch. Um, and he is playing good defenses. I The Colts are a respectable team up front. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I think he's somebody you have to look at, maybe trying to trade while they got any um, name power right now. And A.J. Brown, what, four targets this game. He only catches one of them. Corey Davis had a big game, but, I mean, yeah, who wants to start, start Corey Davis, really? Uh, next game we'll talk about is the Dolphins versus Chargers. And the reality is the Dolphins are 6-3, and three, with five straight games, started 1-3, and three, and now they're 5-0 and oh, the last – uh, five games. Um, Air Bear, um, that's our favorite pronunciation, mm-hmm. Air Bear. Um, he had a solid game. He 24 points. Um, he, he's got enough rushing ability, so he only had 10 yards, but he ran another one in, and then he threw two. Um, he he is an every week start to me right yeah, now. Yeah, he is. Yeah, 24 points. Uh, I think he was top seven quarterbacks. And Kalen Balazs is back from the den. You know what? How many <laughs> players? It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. Wasn't he a Jet? No, he was a Dolphins. He Dolphins. drafted by the Dolphins. Well, wasn't he Jets and then traded to the Dolphins and then traded? I don't remember. But I don't I, remember if he was on the Jets. Yeah. What well, was that? He's back on the team. or I mean, He's back up there now. Did he, he didn't look terrible. He didn't look great. But he got the work, though. 18 carries over Joshua Kelly. I got mean, to work, yeah. Keenan Allen. uh Three catches, 39 yards. Seven, got it in the end se- zone. Seven targets, though. That's so, low for Allen, though. I it, mean, it's low targets and it's low receptions, yeah. but he still scored and still was a startable receiver. Henry finally, uh, you know, got you something on the board there. Yeah, but uh, he, he's, you know, six targets, four receptions, 30 yards and a touchdown, which is good. Yeah. Um, as far as Miami, uh, Selvan Ahmad. Became the workhorse back. He had 21 touches, 21 carries. a four-yard average, and a touchdown. Yeah. Um, he he only had one, one pass, yep. yeah, but he was only targeted once, so he caught everything that went to him. Um, so I he's somebody maybe we need to look at depending on how long Brita and Miles Gaskin is out. I, I don't even know who Savan Am- Ahmad is. I was trying to figure out Me where neither. he played. Not, yeah, kind of fun. Yeah, he was at college, was at Washington. So, How do you feel about Tua? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's clear that they're changing the offense, kind of protecting him. He's got a lot of quick uh, screens or short passes. Yeah. Um, but he hasn't done anything to make me think he's not a competent quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, and uh, on that note, we'll move to the Bills at the Cardinals. Uh, it's probably the most exciting game of the week, maybe the year. Yeah, we talked it up a bunch last week. and. Yeah. It didn't disappoint. Jared Allen, uh, Kyler Murray, they both look good. But Allen, man, jeez, Allen, that's uh, the guy yeah. that uh, he might win you, might win your league this year. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely he's got. It's almost like a guy of destiny. You know, you you have those years where everything seems to work. Mm-hmm. Um, he threw that final hail mary pass up. He, I mean, that wasn't anything that was impressive on him. Mm-hmm. It was impressive on Hopkins. I actually feel like that pass is better than the OBJ one-handed uh, grab because I don't know he if did I agree with that. People. But yeah, yeah. well, um, that but, made Hopkins' day too, and he had a good day. But that uh, was a big part of it. And yeah, that Diggs, was a big part of it. Diggs did his thing. Uh, ten catch, ten catches, ninety-three yards, and a TD on eleven so, targets. But Beasley, yeah, thirteen I mean, Beasley targets. Had a game. Yeah, yeah. Um, st- uh, the touchdown that should have been the winning touchdown of the game mm-hmm. the connection between josh allen and, diggs. and stephen diggs was perfection and stefan i think stefan 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 um josh allen could not have thrown the ball anywhere else any better yeah. uh and then diggs was able to uh, react and catch a pass perfect 
not much to talk about as far as the rushing with Buffalo, Arizona. I mean, Kenyon your bet, Drake, your favorite, hey. your favorite player, came back. Yeah, 16 carries, 100 yards. I mean, yeah, one reception, whatever. no what, touchdowns, uh, but he was decent. Um, Edmonds didn't look bad. He actually had uh, more uh, yards per, per attempt. Count, yeah. And he got mixed in um, for three receptions. So they kind of scored about the same number of points. So, all right, all right let's go on to, we're going to talk about the Giants Phillies. I know you're going to want to belabor this because it's an actual win by the Giants, which is uh, rare, but, you know. All right. Let's talk about well, that. Well, we got the Browns in a couple of weeks, so we'll see what that's all about. It's going to be a big bet for that one, I think. Yeah, we'll work something out. And I, you know, we got Danny Giant, Danny Dimes, or you know, my new name from White Chocolate. Yeah, uh, don't man. Yeah. He had a TD called back too that he ran in. I mean, if he can, if they, if they're going to start to allow him to run the ball more, which is it seems like is what they're doing, designed runs. Uh, you know, he's a potentially a guy going down the stretch that you might want to pick up if he's still available on your waiver wire. And start plugging him in because uh, the upside with his legs is pretty substantial, especially the way that um, Garrett's been calling that offense. They're pretty creative the way he, uh, they set up those QB runs. So I look into that, and uh, Gallman had a nice day. Two touchdowns. You know you're not going to always count on that, but 18 carries. Uh, so so that's nice to see, 53 yards with two touchdowns. Um, Morris had eight carries, so, I mean – you're not crazy about that, but yeah, not bad if you need to plug somebody in on these bye weeks. I I, I think Goldman's the 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 way to go. I think he's in every week start right now mm-hmm. because I think he's going to be scoring touchdowns. I disagree a little bit with you on Danny uh, Danny Dimes because yep. he just he didn't throw any touchdowns. He's prone to interceptions, yep. and really where he separated himself was on the ground. Had he not had those runs and that touchdown, he would have been a top. 20 quarterback instead of the number 10 quarterback that's true but there you could also say that if he didn't run those touchdowns he might have th- thrown them that's fair and uh he went over 200 20 over 28 but no turnovers the last two weeks so yeah on the upside no uh n- no receivers that struck out or you know stuck out for me with the giants um and really same can be said for Philadelphia, but yep. there were three running backs that were uh, impactful. Yep. Miles Sanders led the charge uh, with the greatest number of touches, but Boston Scott and Corey Clement both had touchdowns, yep. which is kind of concerning because it seems like they don't want to commit to miles around the goal line. Yeah, especially if you're watching the game as a Giants fan, hoping Philly doesn't score, and then when they do score, it's not the guy playing for you. I mean, yeah. Pretty annoying. And Wentz is just a guy I'm not yeah. starting at all. No, I would not start him at all. Yeah. Let's move on to the Washington versus Lions, which was a, you know, ended up being a pretty exciting game. Yeah, Stafford, man. Uh, Stafford had a nice day. Yeah. Yes, and I uh, was surprised to see him have a nice, not that I don't expect him to have a nice day, uh, but this defense is pretty good. But, you know, TJ Hawkinson not being a part of that nice day was pretty surprising. You know, he was targeted four times, um, but he only got 13 yards. It wasn't impressive. And then the player I said was not going to do well, Marvin Jones, did and DeAndre well. DeAndre Swift, by yeah. the way. Yeah. 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 But, 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 yeah, but we said he wasn't going to do well, not because we don't believe in him, but because they weren't using him. Yeah. And they gave him 16 carries yeah. and uh, five targets, which he caught all. All of. five, yeah. yeah. And he scored in the air. Yep. Uh, it, good rebound game for Antonio Gibson. Yeah. Uh, two touchdowns and then was uh, mixed in a little bit. So he had four targets for, and he caught all four. So he looked pretty good. Alex Smith threw the ball 55 times this game. Yeah. And he looked really good at times. Yeah. 390 yards. No touchdowns. No, no touchdowns. Yeah. And he did run twice. And both of them, I found myself holding my breath because he's one, I mean, a breath of air would probably break his legs. So yeah, McLaurin is just plugging along. He didn't get a touchdown this week, but he gives you. He's going to get uh, nine targets this week. He's always going to have a, a healthy amount of targets. He, he's always going to get ten points or more. Like he's a player with a very good ceiling. What's well, a little uh, concerning about uh, this is Cam Sims. I think had the second most snaps on the team behind McLaurin, but only five targets. So yeah, it's yep. a little concerning than. Uh, 
I think that's about it for this game. What do you want to do? Go on to Let's the next? go on to the Bucks and the Bucks did what the Bucks do. The Bucks beat up on bad teams or subpar teams. Yeah. Carolina is not a terrible team, but they're a be- they're a team you should win and Tampa looked like a world beater. Um yeah. are they? I-, I don't I don't know. Um Brady had a great game. He three touchdowns and then he ran one in too, which if Brady's running in a touchdown, it's it's a special day. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to call you out a little bit on your Bridgewater take. Uh, he didn't look, I mean, he did have the two TDs, but he threw a pick. Um, only 136 yards through the air. So, yeah. But he still got you two touchdowns through the air and one on the ground. Oh, I and didn't so see he, he ran one in. Yeah. yeah. So he finished top, you know, top 15, top, I think higher than that. I think he was. What do you think about Curtis Samuel? Uh, You know, I can't figure it out. He had only five targets and only got eight yards. Yeah. I, I just can't figure it out, especially because um, and the whole team was down this game. I mean, Robbie Anderson, four catches. Mike Davis was a big, big bust. Uh, man, he hurt me. I started him over Swift this week. That, that was that was pretty rough. I started him in one of my leagues, too, and I think that was not a bad call. It just he no. didn't do very well. So. Let's not bury the lead here either. We got Antonio Brown, seven catches, 69 yards. Yeah. Um, and he had eight targets. So, I, you know, I think what we're, what we're dealing with is this week the winner was Mike Evans because of a late touchdown. Yeah. But if I'm saying here's a receiver you should start every week on Tampa, it would be Rob Gonkrowski because I just don't like the fact that you had – uh, six targets for Godwin, 11 for Evans, eight for Brown. Um, Gronkowski is going to take some. Cameron Bray got mixed in. I don't know that you could start any of those top three with any surety of who's going to have a good week. Well, yeah, I mean, this is a bad week to judge on because they put up 46 points. So, But, I, I mean, I'm looking at the numbers here. Gronk, three targets. Bray, three targets. I mean, they were basically the same guy this week. Yeah. Um, yeah, but at I least don't know with the three saw. receivers, you got six. No, I didn't watch the game. Um, so so Gronk was carrying guys again. Like he looked yeah. like the Gronk of old. He almost scored a second touchdown. Was pulled down about I think on a three yard line. That was the score that Brady ran in. Got it. So, and uh, we could just forget about Leonard Fournette, right? Yeah, uh, Ronald Jones though, great game. Uh, he had a long ninety eight yard touchdown, but even without that, he had almost a hundred yards. Um, so I, I think he's starting to become a consistent back. Let's move on to the next game. We've got New Orleans versus San Fran. What were your thoughts? Oh, Nick Mullins, man. Two interceptions uh, really hurt him. But, you know, he looked okay. I mean, he looked like uh, vintage Nick Mullins. McKinnon, well, 18 carries, 33 yards. I mean, I could probably work that average out of my head. So probably yeah. around two yards a carry, a yeah. little bit less. Yeah, 1.8. Yeah. Uh, Hasty, three for 13 yards, and I think he's on the injury report this week. Right, and I think that they may be getting back um, Raheem next game too. Oh, well, that's, so that will be nice. Um, as far as New Orleans rushing, you had Murray who was – the most carries, but that was only nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kamara had eight and only had 1.9 yard average. Didn't look really great, but what saved him, as always, is scored twice. He scored twice, and then he was their number one. And he, well, he scored three. Yeah, he scored the uh, one in the air too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, Brandon Ayuk, we talked up a little bit last week. Seven yeah. catches, 75 yards, and a touchdown. 14 targets. Yeah. So yeah. Richie James, mm, maybe not so much. I mean, he oh. had five targets. He just didn't do much with them. No. So, and I think that's about it for that game. Drew Brees There's looked much terrible. There. Yeah, um, pretty bad. Yeah, in fact, they brought in Jameis Winston mm-hmm. for six. So we may have to pay attention to that. Maybe yeah. there's an injury there. Yeah, he did. I, I did see something there. He did get banged up a little bit at the end there. All right, uh, Green Bay, Jacksonville. Uh, Jacksonville is impressive to me because they have been in most games this year. Um, we've spoken about their players. James Robinson had another great game, 23 touches, 109 yards uh, on the ground, and then two receptions um, in the air. He's the only Jacksonville back who got a touch. Yeah, I was wrong. I mean, they kept they kept it a lot closer than I thought they were going to be able to keep it. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think that was your worry, but yeah. it didn't turn out to and be And then that. Luton, man, I mean, he wasn't great, but... 
I just, li- I just, I just like the guy. I don't yeah. know. I like yeah. Luton. Um, as far as the receivers in Jacksonville, we, uh, Shark four for fifty six, five targets. Keelan Cole had uh, seven targets. Conley had the most targets, but still, you know, pedestrian four catches, forty three yards. Well, and, and uh, Keelan Eifert. Cole also ran a, a kick return in for a score too. No, I didn't see that yeah, either. I didn't good. watch that game. Um, on the other side, Aaron Jones looked very pedestrian uh, on the ground, but did have five receptions. Uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling is starting to look like you got to pay attention to him. It's like I think his third week out of the last four where he's had 100 yards or right around there and a score. So I think we're starting. I have him on my bench, and I kind of felt like, man, I'm, I'm missing it. Um, quietly, you know, quietly he's averaging a decent number of points, uh, you know, so he's somebody to watch. Yeah, but I feel like it's, you know, it's all big plays. He, you know, it's like a Deshaun Jackson situation, right? Or like it's the volume's not there, but he, he gets these big chunk plays. And I guess it's, you know, it's not a bad guy to start if – you have to have that mindset when yeah. you put put him in your lineup that he's going to boom or bust. He's probably going to be in your third wide receiver or maybe mm-hmm. a flex spot, and he might perform for you. Uh, Devontae Adams, though, had a good game. Aaron Rodgers had a great game again. He actually um, ran one in, too, uh, which really helped his total. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, you don't expect that out of those old legs anymore, do you? Yeah, he's, you know, he's having a rebound year. So. Yeah, he looks good. He's in the MVP conversation for sure. And right. we got uh, Denver and Las Vegas, right? Yeah. Drew Locke, man. He had a Drew Locke kind of game. Four interceptions. Hmm. Guy's just a, a train wreck. Yeah, uh, pretty bad. Derek Carr's got to be on the list. not much better, man. No. And I think we have to start saying this is like three games now where he's not performed. Um, maybe they're catering their uh, offense away from him. Yeah, I would say I know last week um, it wasn't uh, this bad. I mean, I I just don't know what to think because he's been pretty consistent throughout the year. He had that Cleveland game with the the terrible weather. Um, But this, I mean, 16 for 25, 154 yards. I just, uh, I don't know. Yeah, Booker, and we talked about Jacobs and Booker. Uh, Jacobs well, and, had a game, but yeah, and I, I, you're saying he had a game, and I agree with you. He had a game. He actually had four receptions and 112 yards, but Booker had 16 attempts compared to 21 by Jacobs. Mm-hmm. He actually had slightly less, but not by much. 5.3, 5.1 yard mm-hmm. average. Both scored twice. I think this was a Jacobs game because they scored a lot of points. But in a close matchup, it probably would have looked a lot more 50-50, and that's what scares me about Jacobs. Well, I mean, it looks – I mean, listen, I was all on board with you last week saying that Booker might be a guy you want to pick up and trade Jacobs. But, you know, Booker had two touchdowns too. So if you take those away, they're, they're kind of in the same boat. I, mean, I just wonder if they're going to start going this route like Cleveland is, where they're going to become like yeah. a more run-heavy heavy offense, and then maybe you could start both of these guys. Yeah, but the thing is, you're not going to score four touchdowns a week no. by running backs. And no, so, but I would take 16 for 81 with yeah. a couple catches. With did uh, yep. You have any? He had one reception. reception no, yeah. but Jake uh, Jacobs looked four for 24. That's not bad. Even if you give me 100 yards and 90 yards with those carries and a yeah. few catches, I'll take that. The thing is, he just had a lot of games where that wasn't the fact. Um, nobody in the receiving world looked great. The, I mean, I like how Judy looks. I just don't think you can yeah. trust Locke to throw him the ball. Well, and what bothers me is he caught four. He had eight targets, but the guy that he seems to favor is K.J. Hamler, who had ten targets, um, who, but he only caught four of them. And as far as the other uh, Las Vegas, they all were kind of a mixed bag, yeah. all about 30 yards. So I, I don't know that they're startable right now. All right, and then uh, – our final game, talk about the Seahawks and the Rams, and uh, Russell Wilson looking like Mr. Not Incredible. Uh, two interceptions, 248 yards, and 22 for 37, QBR of 31.1. What's going on with Russell Wilson? Uh, just a bad game. I think that the Rams are great up front, and the Seahawks are not great on their offensive line. 
Um, Russell Wilson had to run a ton. He ran yeah. eight times for 60 yards, yeah. so that means he was under duress. Uh, I don't think he had a clean pocket, uh, pocket most of that game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think this is a one-game anomaly more than it's anything to worry about. They're going to get their points if they're not running up a defense like this. Um, but uh, I, I, I think they're also hurt because their running backs are just decimated. You got Carson who didn't start. Yeah. Uh, Carlos Hyde, who was who's gone. Oh. Yeah, they were using Alex Collins and DJ Dallas. And uh, Jalen Ramsey locked up Metcalf, huh? Yes, he did. Yeah. Two catches, 28 yards. But, you, you know, you got a nice little game out of Lockett there. Nine targets. Yeah. Yep. Did I tell you, yeah, yeah, Metcalf was, yeah, Metcalf was taken out of this game. Strange, uh, Los Angeles hasn't given up yet on Cam Akers. They gave him 10 carries, which he had the most carries. He yeah. just didn't do anything with them. Was that 3.8 yards per yeah. carry? Yeah. And the guys who scored were Malcolm Brown and Daryl Henderson. And Josh Reynolds had a nice game. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. Eight receptions, eight, 10 targets. You look at Cup here. I want to let me pull up Cup's numbers real quick. Cup, I think, is dealing with some kind of injury because he's not been Cup all year. It's just not looking yeah. great. He had uh, five catches, 50 yards. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what he did last week. Yeah, I mean he was yeah he was better last week so maybe it's just a matchup thing, but um, golf, what you think about golf this week? <laughs> yeah, I don't think you should think about golf at all. I think a lot of people going into this week, seeing what the the Bills did to the Seahawks, seeing how bad this offense was, and I know for a fact uh, my brother Zach, he uh, <laughs> he started golf over Jared Allen this week, which is questionable, but. You know, I could understand how you would get there maybe playing against this defense, you think. Yeah, but he, he had uh, Josh Allen on the bench. And I I think as fantasy guys, we tend to overthink. Yeah, sometimes, you know. for sure, especially with matchups. But, I mean, he threw the ball 37 times, 27 completions, over 300 yards, just no TDs. Yeah. You know, and that's what hurt him. Yeah, I hate no TDs. Um, so, all right. I think that that's, we've covered all the games. Yeah. We've talked a little bit about, you do have to look at the, at the injury report. We got some serious things happening. It looks like maybe with, uh, Mixon, Carson, um, I'm starting to wonder how bad Teddy Bridgewater was hurt. He got knocked out of that game, uh, and he was limping on his knee. Hopefully it's nothing, but you got to watch for him. Um, we don't know. Uh, what happened with Drew Brees? So we've got to watch Drew Brees yeah, to see a lot. what's up. Um, yeah. So Drew Brees, I mean, I'm trying to look up the the fantasy report right now. I mean, the injury report because I didn't see anything last night on the ticker about what uh, happened to Brees exactly. I just seen that Winston got in the game late. Well, maybe they're, um, you know, trying to see what they got with Winston. You know, because I think that they're thinking he could be the next. You know, uh, oh, I think for sure they plan to to move forward with Winston when uh, Drew Brees probably retires at the end of this year for sure. Um, but I don't, you see. know, the you know the issue about waiver wires this year or this week is I'm going to be honest with you, it's probably pretty pretty slim. You have your best chance of picking up a receiver than any position because it seems like there's some movement there in in receivers, some up and comers. Um, running back, if you're looking for uh, one, you got to hope that um, Hines isn't on anybody's team. You maybe can look at Burkhead or Devontae Booker. After that, I just don't know who is left unless you take a flyer on like somebody who cut Raheem and maybe you can add him to your team. I, I will say this. Um, we talked about this player last week. Um David Montgomery was knocked out. He's in the concussion protocol. Um, they did announce, I don't know if you noticed that, that no. they elevated Lamar Miller to their team. And I believe my theory is they're going to start transitioning more into Lamar Miller um, and use him as at least a secondary back. And I think he's somebody who's capable of looking better than Montgomery. That's just me. Yeah, we talked about um have you seen anything on McCaffrey? No. No. Yeah, I haven't seen no anything update. on McCaffrey yeah. either. Uh, so, I mean, I guess you got to just roll with Mike Davis for the time being. 
I'm trying to look at other guys that might be left on the waiver wire. I mean, like you said, there's not. I mean, maybe you want to go grab Ahmed if. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Gaskin is not. I mean. Yeah. But there's not a lot out there. Um, I'm seeing here that um, Bridgewater saying it's an MCL sprain. Uh, so, I mean, you got to think about how that's going to affect yeah. those yeah. wideouts. If you, I don't even know who's backing up over there in Carolina. Uh, geez, it, it, it's not coming to mind, but, but I think that's, you kind of get the point. If you have any questions though, I, we would ask that you text us or Facebook us, Instagram, get a hold of us through social media, ask us your individual questions. Um, as always, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of, uh, things on social media. So please share, like review, check out our new TikToks coming out this week, yeah. uh, from two pretty old guys, but you know, I'm not young that, and hip. I'm not that old. Hey, you're kind of old right. well good luck guys good luck you know what I know, my arms open, heart broken, fix and fill with his empty and broke. Oh, 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 know what I know, hearts open, arms open, when I sin, I fall straight to my knees. Yeah, it's like we hold it on the breeze, hating, lacking lust from the Father, cause there's no relation. I'm told to tell you about a word from God, it's not mistaken, that's why it's